Have you ever had a dream? A dream so big, you know with absolute certainty that it has to be from God. Perhaps He gave you a dream, and now you don't feel His presence. Perhaps you begin questioning and doubting yourself, asking yourself, did I do anything wrong? Of course not. You're just in the wilderness where God is preparing you for the thing He has prepared for you. Welcome. I'm your host, Krista Tejada, and along with the Holy Spirit and some very special guests, our mission is to armor you and ignite your faith with all the practical tools, steps, and habits necessary to avoid the pits of a prolonged time in the wilderness. Together, let's tune into grace and go beyond the wilderness. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Krista Tejada. I welcome you to Beyond the Wilderness, where today we have a very special edition where actually it's the 23rd anniversary since the Columbine High School shooting. And this is the very first time that I have publicly spoken about um, that I was there, that that was my high school. Yes, I knew people yada 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 those of you who um are also survivors of the columbine shooting know the stream of questions that follow when you find out that you're from littleton colorado so today is a very special day and i have asked one of my dearest dearest friends to join me in this conversation as we navigate what does this day mean to you Maybe you're a Columbine shooting survivor and you're one of our classmates and you're joining us. Maybe you are a survivor of a shooting from another event since there's been so many countless shootings that are similar since 1999. Maybe you have um, survived a, a trauma or a tragedy that nobody knows about. Today we want to just talk about how the Lord can take uh, what the enemy meant for harm and how the Lord can use it for good. Uh, my dear friend Michelle and I um, are going to be just, just having a conversation, inviting the Holy Spirit into this conversation, inviting you to join us as well as we just talk all things trauma, all things um, survivor, all things God. And, and so I want to introduce you to my dear friend. She means the world to me, probably um, the reason that I am still here today. She was the first person that I saw as I ran out the doors from our school when the fire alarm was pulled. So um, I just want to welcome on my dearest, dearest friend, Michelle Fox, now Williams. Welcome, Michelle. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And just share this special time and this conversation with you. I'm so excited to see what the Lord has in store and hopefully offering hope to um, to many people beyond what we can even imagine. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. So today, uh, Michelle is just totally walking in obedience because it was not just a few hours ago that um, she sent me a text, of course, as she always does on this day. Um, every year, just, you know, reminding us of who we are, not only in Christ, but who we are. Um, and the chant goes, we are Columbine. And we we hold that in our hearts um, because it, 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 it reminds us that we are a collective group, that we are um, a group of survivors. We are a group, we are a community. And no matter what the enemy meant to do to break us or divide us, that we stand together and the Lord has blessed uh, myself and used this event in so many ways. And I know as well for Michelle. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, just so far, keeping it light, like what has your day been like today? Do you do anything to um, like specially commemorate? Now you um, have the pleasure of being in Littleton. You got to go back home after many years of living away. So tell me, what's it like now that you do get to live um, back in Littleton? And is there anything special that you have found that really uh, ministers to your heart and helps you to just um, 
commemorate this day in your own special way? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it is it is a privilege to be back here, um, especially on, on these days specifically. Um, what I do is I always go to the memorial, which is at Grand Park, and so I'll walk around. Um, I usually go in the morning. This morning I did not um, go. I went yesterday, I'll go back. Um, I went yesterday specifically because I know like today there's a lot of visitors and um, so I just wanted that time just to be quiet. And so I went and you can walk on, up this hill and I sat and it overlooks the mountains and Littleton. And so um, I did that and just sat in silence and, and just thank God for life um, and just everything in between that God has done in my life. And it, I believe like for me, it's a time of just being so grateful for allowing that in my life because I wouldn't be who I am today. I see, I see things differently. Um, and so I'm so grateful for that. So that's been really special all these years, um, as well as, so my oldest son, he's a, um, he's at Columbine and he's a sophomore. And so they do a, a day of remembrance and they serve like the school shut down, but they serve in, in the community, which is so cool. Um, so I was excited for him to be able to do that. And I think, I mean, you know, I always say like, Col we have Columbine blood. So when he gets like, he gets to do stuff that just is like, like Krista, you were saying like the sense of community um, is unlike any anything I've ever experienced. So even in the community, um, it's, it's always remembered. And even 23 years ago, you would think it would kind of like slowly kind of fizzle out and be forgotten, but it's just not. And um, Columbine runs really deep in this community. So that's what I did and that's, do. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, if truth be told, I have, I don't know that I've ever walked the memorial. Now you might remember because the only time that I have ever been home since on this day was I think the 10 year reunion and I was with you and Kim and your family and I remember your boys were tiny and I don't know maybe we we walked up there but my memory I don't have that memory of actually walking up and ever I think I must have I, I must have walked up there and, and looked at the memorial but my memory like I just I don't know if it's one of the other things that I blocked out um, but I just, I have struggled. I have struggled with this day. Um, I've always known that, that God had a bigger plan for me because of how the circumstances of that day rolled out. Like there is no doubt. And I'm sure, you know, you could say the same thing. We've had these conversations time and time again. And, um, but I have struggled because it's like, okay, God, I know that I have, I have a purpose, right? You saved me that day. So I have actually like strived to figure out what is this purpose since that day? And I have really wrestled through that for quite some time. And that's why, you know, I call this, you know, going beyond the wilderness because I knew that the Lord had a calling on my life. But I felt like many times in my life I've been in a wilderness where I don't hear from him or I'm trying to do it in my own way, thus not hearing from him. So I wonder, um, I, I, I know you have a very special um, way that you have remembered. I was listening um, just earlier today. Well, let me back up a second because how this actually came about is the Lord has asked me to do this many times, many years, every time 420 creeps up, it, it's not like, I don't know it's coming. I know it's coming and I just kind of pretend like it's not coming. Um, because I just have my own stuff built around it, right? Like I feel like I have worked through the feelings and everything, but there's always something more. And, and the one thing that I always have felt the Lord asked me to do is to do this, to go live, to share my story, to bring others to share their story. And I always chicken out. And so that's why it was so last minute this morning is because 
I felt it and I was like, oh, I know Michelle is busy, this and that. And come to find out, like I had texted you a couple days ago and come to find out I have the wrong number for you. And so when you texted me, it was like God confirming that you and I needed to um, to do this. And so I appreciate your obedience and your willingness um, and your bravery. So continuing the conversation though, um, just as I was listening earlier today, I actually John Piper is one of my favorites. So if I'm ever like um, wrestling through something, I always go uh, and I, I Google John Piper and whatever the topic is to see what he has to say. There's, um, he has a great podcast for that. and something popped up on tragedy, overcoming tragedy. And he was sharing um, that one of the key takeaways I took was that even with a tragedy, um, we can think of it, of the tragedy and its effect, not as a wound that needs to be healed, but as a disability to bear. And, and he went along with the story of Jacob and how Jacob wrestled with God and ended up with a broken hip and how that hip never quite healed, right? So he walked through his whole life with this disability and disabilities can be physical. They can be emotional, they can be mental, right? And I can look at, I think I've come to terms with that. I can look at um, this day and being a survivor of the Columbine shooting as a disability because it's something that I carry with me that I'm always reminded of that helps me to walk unashamed. That reminds me like your tattoo, right? You want to share about your tattoo and, and, and what, I mean, I don't want to assume. So you share um, with our audience, why, why did you choose that? And um, I also have a tattoo, but I'll get to that later. So you share yours and why, why it is that you did and what, why it is that you chose what you did and what does it mean to you when you see it? So I, my, let me see. My tattoo right here is a Columbine flower and it says live right here. Um, I got that, my sister and I actually went together um, a long while back and we got it. I chose that because that honestly is like where I learned to, where I learned to start living. Um, and so I always, you know, and always when you experience something like that, when literally um, just in, I'm sure people who have experienced tragedy like this, you'll never forget it. And it's an, it's like our, you know, my life was spared. And so I feel the responsibility to carry something on, even if, even if going through the wilderness, I don't just remain because I feel like God has given me like the reminder to keep trudging forward, even if I'm crawling and I am still moving forward because I do believe that I have a responsibility while I'm here on this earth to live. Mm -hmm. So, so when you, when you see that on your arm each and every day throughout the day, like, what is it like? It just like what sparks in you? What it, does it, is it a feeling? Is it just a reminder? Um, I think it's different every day. You know, there's days that, um, I mean, obviously I see it every day. I think it is like, sometimes my heart's more tender towards it. And so I'll lean into that. Um, some days it just is like, God, thank you for sparing my life. Um, then, or it'll be a reminder to pray for the, um, the families who's lost their their um students their kids that day um i also remember like to pray over the school still to this day um now that i'm a parent and i have you know kids that go there so i think it just like it encompasses so much and it just is not the same every day and i but what it cultivates in me is a deep gratitude to for life and and I'm just grateful for like, I mean, God's given me so many, so many chances, if you want to use that word, um, in life. And I just feel like this was one of like a, a pivotal moment. So it's a reminder today. Absolutely. Um, so like I experienced, like you said, it's a reminder 
I can't remember your words. You said that's the day you learn to live, I think is your words. And yeah, um, I think that's so beautiful because uh, I, you know, I feel very similar and I have shared in my testimony that I always knew I would die for Christ um, because we saw it, you know, we heard the testimonies uh, of those who were around Rachel Scott that day, Cassie Bernal, and 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 even some others that um, aren't publicly spoken about, and how they were faced uh, life and death to proclaim their Lord and Savior or not, and they were targeted specifically for that reason. We know that for a fact um, uh, that Rachel, in particular, was targeted, and and then again asked point blank in the face after she had already suffered wounds. Um, you know, where's your God now, right? Something to that effect. And I apologize for not warning y'all um, before I said that. Um, I hope that that um, it's okay to share. But um, I mean, you, you, your heart, I mean, there's a, there's a movie, there's a book. I encourage you to check it out. It's called I Am Not Ashamed. It's about Rachel Joy Scott's testimony her family has um carried her legacy on and her testimony on in such a beautiful way so i encourage you to check that out and but just like rachel joy scott like i learned that day as well to live i learned um that i would i learned that i would die for my faith but it was not until i was 35 years old so let's see we were 18 um, i had just turned 18 your birthday's a week before mine so we had just turned 18 years old <laughs> And here we are, like we had three weeks left of school um, in our senior year, because of course our year was a little bit shorter as um, seniors. And so we're anticipating the end of the school year and everything abruptly stops. And of course we all have our own memories. Like I had to go um, get help to re recall a lot of the day. The first 24 hours you and I were inseparable and um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that the Lord, you know, uh, brought us together because, I mean, who knows, right? And I don't think that it was by accident. And um, through high school, you know, before this tragedy, uh, it was always like, you know, it's difficult in high school to walk uh, with the Lord. And we linked arms in 10th grade and we would read the Bible together. We'd go to church together. We'd do some youth group together. And um, I'm, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you um, just for your heart and to your parents, for um, even your dad, who was just, we felt like so strict. Um, I just, I, I just love your family so much. And I feel um, really a huge debt to your family for carrying me and being there with me through those high school years that were so high school right <laughs> and so I just thank you for that and but yeah 35 years old before I really learned to live for Christ like you you were already there you learned that day to live where I learned I would die for Christ but at 35 I then learned I want to live for Christ and how then that became that responsibility I took on like you said that day how you look at your tattoo and how you uh, feel that strong responsibility to, um, because you were spared, to share the gospel, to share your faith, to be a light in your community. I wonder, um, as your son, as your kids now are entering into high school, has that been difficult for you um, to have them go there? Is like, what kind of feelings came up for you and how did you overcome that? I know for me, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I, um, I think for me, I am thankful for, I'm not a fearful person. I just am not. Um, I think in the way I began to understand maybe how our parents felt, you know, I'm like, what, what? And I honestly, that's where I think about, I often think about that. Like when I, um, would take the boys to school or, um, I pray protection over them. Um, and I think that's like what changed me. It's like, instead of, you know, I know my boy, my boy is like, God is such a greater God than 
I ever think I, you know, <laughs> I'm not a protector. God's their protector. And so I released them yet. I, it changed how I, on being a parent, I cannot imagine, begin to imagine the pain and suffering, um, that parents who have lost, you know, who had lost their son or daughter. And then also being our parents, Chris said that they, um, you know, they didn't know f for a long time if we were okay and, and not. And so like, even just even, or even how to walk with us through something like that, you know? Um, so I think in that aspect, that's, I have a different perspective because now I'm on this side of it as a parent, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So I am very grateful um and also prideful in a way of like i have columbine pride so i it does my heart so i i'm grateful for columbine um it's it's a school like no other i can't i don't know if you if you haven't experienced it you you won't understand it fully and completely but um i have a heart full of gratitude for for um the just the staff the faculty um and they, I mean, like safety wise, it's probably one of, or the safest school um, that your kids could go to. So that's a, a great thing as well. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now today mm -hmm. um, with, um, with the boys going, you know, well, Ryder, he's our oldest. He's currently going there. Scout will go there in a couple months. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. Like when people ask me about, you know, what it was like, I I feel like I was so protected, right? Like we have our memories of, you know, looking for Kim and 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 waiting for, you know, to find out. Like there's there's so much, you know, we can't we don't have enough time to unpack all of that. But I often mm -hmm. also since I've had kids recounted what it must have been like for our parents and especially your parents who were in another country. Um, yeah. you know, like I will never forget. I don't know if you remember as we jumped out of the car and ran after my parents' vehicle. Um, I remember my, my dad must've seen us in the rear view mirror and he just throws up his hands and they get out and they're weeping and they're sobbing. And I'm like confused. I'm like, okay, it's good to see you too. But like, I didn't understand the, the magnitude of what had happened yet. They were the ones that first told us people uh, we're dying. Like it still had not resonated. And that was probably what, like two hours after it had begun. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the world knew what was happening before we did, right? I was in the gym, I was lifting weights. Michelle, you were, you were in the, in home ec? Yeah, I was in foods class. Yeah, foods class, yeah. right. You were right. Right next, to you. Yep. right next to me. So that's how we were so blessed. And and my memory serves me that we had discussed not going to that elective that day that we were going to um, possibly go to the library or, or do something like I, that's my memory. And oftentimes I confuse memories, but um, <laughs> like, I, I've always felt like we, there was a reason, right. And then um, as we have walked through life and we have um, grown up <laughs> in some ways, and now we have children of our own, we have had uh, many um, just mm -hmm. life events since that day and but still holding strong to our faith has there ever been a point in your life since Columbine um, maybe in the beginning or maybe it came after where you uh, questioned the Lord where you you know wrestled with why me why did you save me yeah um I don't, I guess like, I mean, for me personally, I don't feel like I ever, you know, they call that survivor guilt, you know, and I, I don't, for me personally, I don't, um, I've never experienced that. I think, like I said, it's just like, I, I experienced like a responsibility or a charge, like, okay, now, like I, you're still living. You have breath in your in your lungs. So go do something 
about it oh. and for, you know, and for me. And so I didn't realize that until um, I matured in my faith. I was like, Jesus didn't make sense to me until then, really. And so, um, and so as I matured, I'm like, okay, like this is something like life is life. It says in the Bible, life is a vapor. And I take that so seriously. I wake up every day thinking like this, we got one chance at this one chance. And so for me, um, I took it as like, instead of, I didn't experience survivor guilt. I took it as like, okay, put some battle clothes on. Cause you're going to battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. I, I feel that more now than ever, right? Like I feel, you know, Columbine was the first big school shooting and how many have been since? I mean, I can't even count. And yeah. not just school shootings, but then you have, you know, movie theater, concerts. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I don't watch the news anymore. I get the highlights from Twitter or my husband, you know. <laughs> And, um, uh, because I just, I can't li I, I just can't partake, partake in the negativity. And because I know that, um, our God is greater and that I have to keep that, that channel clear. So I know what the Lord um, desires for me today. Like you said, there is only this present moment. So we don't get a do over. And we, as it, as when we were 18, we were thrust into that reality and, you know, Oftentimes I have personally felt like no big deal. Like it's no big deal. You know, I survived. Yes, I know I have a, there's a purpose for my life, but I don't want it to define me. I have like had this almost like complex, if I'm truly honest, like not even wanting to talk about it because I don't want to go down that road where you ask me a million questions about it and you don't really care about my answers. You know, like anybody who's been through a trauma can probably uh, attest that, you know, people are curious, they mm -hmm. want to know. And so one of the things that I had to do and, and, and uh, jump in here any moment, if you have, if you've experienced this, but like people would be so curious and they would ask, and I had to get to the point where I was like, yes, I would love to share with you um, my experience of that day. I would love to share with you all of it, but it's not just something I talk about casually. It opens a part of my heart that I feel deeply and I would love to share it with you and allow it to, you know, be an encouragement to you. But just know that if we sit and talk about this, it's not just a quick popcorn question and answers, that this is really something that is woven into my spirit of who I am. It's made me who I am today. And and I I do enjoy not I, it's not necessarily enjoy, right? Like I, I know that it's something that the Lord is using, um, that I experienced it for a reason. And so therefore I want to be uh, sensitive to that. And if the Lord, you know, wants to use that message or my testimony, um, to heal or share with somebody else, then I, I'm, I'm totally open for that. But as far as just curiosity, it's like, just be, just be aware, right? So, um, have you had experiences like that too? I'm sure. Yeah, but you're way nicer than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I feel like I've gotten to the point, you know, I will, um, if, you know, it's just, you, I don't know, you read the people, read the room kind of thing. And I believe like sharing my story. I love it. I believe in it. I believe in story and it's so huge healing that's been probably one of the biggest healing agents um is sharing my story um but there are times where i'm like i know you don't i know you just want some information and you just want to meet someone with especially the early days um when it was closer to um the tragedy i think there was times where i'm just like i'm so tired exhausted um and also like i i don't think i want to share this like yeah, my answer would be, yeah, it changed my life. And mm -hmm. I would kind of move, <laughs> move along, yeah. you know, um, there's still times I'm like, yeah, it, it, it changed my life. And, you know, and I don't invite them into that part of my story. And unless I'm ready for it or, or have the time, I too, I think it is something, um, you, you know, to 
sit, it's like a sit, if you want the full, you know, full story or whatever, because it is conversational. I want people to feel the freedom to ask questions and it's not like a quick, like passerby conversation, mm-hmm. like with any kind of tragedy or hardship. Right. So, um, a couple things wrapping up, I feel like, um, I want to go back to how you said that this is the day that you learn to live. So if you would, if you don't mind, share a little bit about life before for you and then life after and how um, you walked differently or thought differently. Just share a little yeah. bit um, of what that looked like or felt like, what that meant to you. Yeah. Um, I always knew, like, um, I think I wasn't, I always knew there was a God. Um my sister was actually a huge caveat in my life with that. Um, Krista, you know that. Um, she would always pray for me. And it was, anyway, I, I always tell her, I'm like, God, because of her prayers, like I am, you know, God used those to help um, reveal himself to me. I wasn't really, um, I think I was just in a lot of um, pain. Um Maybe I didn't, and I didn't know it at the time prior to experience some things that were difficult, um, self-induced and not. Um, and so um, after that, when I, after, at the shooting, after the shooting, when, when I, I learned to live is like, I feel like I, I, it was like, I finally was like becoming because I'm like, this life is, okay, I got, I got to start doing something. And I'm like, okay, like, God, like we, I don't know exact, I know you're here, but I don't know you. Like I know of you, but I don't know you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so I just started to, um, begin to, I went to, I think, uh, in a lot, I was just experiencing like a lot of, um, dysfunction and just stuff that I needed to um, just start beginning to, to start allowing God to heal, not only, but I think the shooting cultivated that kind of like disrupted me. And, um, and so, and it has, that was a big, like I keep saying, it was pivotal for me. And, um, and so I, I wanted to get away from everything. And I did, I left, I went across the country to school. I didn't, um, I knew one or two people and, um, and, but also Chris, I like it, you know, it, I was the girl from Columbine. No one else was there. I was, I mean, think it was just happened. And then we went to college a few months later. And so it kind of became my identity and I kind of honestly liked it. And, um, I was a girl from Columbine and, you know, and I say that like, now I'm like, oh, that was kind of like, there was a reason why, and I'm sure that will be judged up in my therapy that I continue to go to. Um, but there was that, um, I was like, oh, I have like, I'm, I'm making, I could, I'm creating someone new, if that makes sense. Um, not in a healthy way, obviously. But that soon, like after, um, you know, I was traveling a lot and speaking and sharing my story. And, um, and so I kind of, I kind of rode that wave for a little bit. And then it, then I was just like, and then the wave ended and I was just like, wait, who am I? You know? And so that's where, um, in that moment, after I rode that wave, I'm like, okay, like, I got to figure out who I am, like without any labels or, you know, and so, uh, so that was like, for me, um, yeah, it, it was part, it's part of my story. I mean, it's in an unhealthy way. Well, so I think, um, you know, we can be really self-critical, right? I think ultimately what matters and it's beautiful story. And I thank you for your humility and sharing that. And because that's what is healing. That is, you know, us actually sharing our brokenness. That's what heals and helps others heal to realize like, Oh, I'm, I'm, this is normal, right? Like we're all sinners. And, um, 
you know, we're all sinners and, and we're all in need of a savior. And, you know, even when you're walking with the Lord and you're doing the Lord's work or it's, it's so easy. I have learned like you, I grew up knowing the Lord. I felt like it was more a legalistic, um, kind of relationship with the Lord where I, I did the right things. I said the right things. I went to church, you know, I just tried to be a good person. And then I came to learn when I was like 35 that it's, there, I'm never going to be good enough. And so the, the striving needed to stop. And that's when I laid it down at the cross and the Lord, where that's where Jesus like became personal. Um, when I realized he died for me, not like, you know, it went from like, Oh, he died for us. It to he died for me. And like, I really personalized that and it became so like deep and personal. And because of that, um, I too have, you know, spent time in ministry and done work for the Lord, but with this like puffed up almost ego of like, oh, look what I'm doing with God, right? And then now I've come to realize, um, as you have come to realize that, you know, it's all God and he doesn't need us. He will use us when we are surrendered to him and his will, but he doesn't need us, right? He has given us this opportunity to walk this walk to be in this community that he has planted us in and to bloom here and we do that um with the utmost humility as you said like just you know on our knees every day thank you lord for this day that i know is a blessing like we i think it that is such a gift that even though it thrust us into adulthood so fast in such a traumatic way it was a gift that we could then spend 18 till whenever he calls us home, that we from that moment knew how precious life was and we could live intentionally. Now, yes, we had our, our down days and our down months and sometimes even for me down years where I'm lost in the wilderness. College was a very dark time for me. Um, you know, I, I swayed with the wind a lot in college because unlike you, I did not go to a Christian university. Um, and I went to a, you know, a public university and, and like you, yes, I was known as the, the girl who went to Columbine, but I also was on the floor with several other girls from Columbine thinking that was going to be, um, really healthy and minister to my soul. Um, and in a way it was, and in a way it wasn't because just like you, you wrestled with identity and what it, what, what it meant to be the girl from Columbine and what it, you know, who the Lord was shaping you in to be. I also was struggling with that, um, and but I didn't have any sort of foundation of my faith around me, where um, in your case, at least you were surrounded by the Holy Spirit at school. And I remember being so upset with you that you decided to go to Virginia so far away from me because, you know, I just didn't think I could live without you. You had been, you and your sister and your family had been such a rock in my life. And um, so... Yeah, I just, I think that we all have had our, our moments, you know, and anybody who um, who has been through this with us, you know, our, our friends, our classmates that we have talked with through the years, we all have a story. Um, and it's all a beautiful story. And I think that, um, I think one of your sister's favorite um, terms, you know, beauty, beauty from the ashes, right? Like, he, the Lord does take um, our brokenness and make something so beautiful. And um, so I thank you for sharing your story. And as we close out here, I wonder if you would have any sense of, for, for those um, of our, you know, fellow classmates who are still wrestling with who they are, right? Their identity. Um, because I, I know I have struggled for so many years and it has come, this year comes so, so clear to me uh, what it means to be unashamed of my faith and what it means because to, to be completely unashamed means I am not afraid to make a fool of myself sharing my faith. I am not afraid to say yes when the gun is pointed in my face. I am not afraid of offending someone when I share my faith because 
the Lord has called me to do that. And I walk in obedience and I um, take these leaps like, like we are now to share our stories, to share our faith so that it could possibly touch someone in need, not because of who I am or who you are, but because of who he is, not because of something I could do or say, but because it's of the Lord who chooses to reach out and touch that person today. And so, um, you know, I have struggled and wrestled to get to this point and I, um, I do what I do today to reach out and support those who are still in that wilderness to help them. Not that I have the power to get them out of the wilderness, but to help them um, find their way so that they don't prolong the time in the wilderness because we certainly can do that, can't we? We can get in our head. We can feel sorry for ourselves. We can question ourselves, doubt ourselves, all of that. So as we just wrap up, um, just what words of wisdom would you have for someone who is still struggling in who they are, like their identity, they're a survivor maybe of Columbine, maybe they're a survivor of something else, maybe they're a survivor, a survivor of a tragedy that they have never spoken out loud. Maybe they carry it all on their own. And if we, that just gave me chills. What if, um, what words, if, what would you hope that they would hear out of everything that we've said that um, just as, what has the Lord given you? Um, I think, well, I know that just not to do it alone. Um, we're, we weren't created to do life alone. And that's what, um, and as believers, we know, uh, believe that there's a real enemy who wants nothing more but to keep, kill steal and destroy and um and so in that and then also putting us in isolation we've experienced that the last two years right with covid isolation does not bring out goodness um because we weren't created for that so i would encourage um whoever's experienced just like hard stuff a, a tragedy or trauma or just you know just really hard things um don't do it alone you don't have to do it alone. Don't think you have to do it alone. Um, and I would also encourage um, just do the next right thing, meaning whatever that next right thing is, even if it's just sometimes it's just getting out of bed, get out of bed, um, be courageous and brave and, um, and, and let yourself just be where you're at. Um, don't try to like, Krista, like you said, muster um, you know, muster um, yourself up to doing something or to be someone. It just, no, just there's freedom to be where you're at. And I believe that God will, um, as believers in Jesus, like he meets us there. He's not afraid of that. We were, I say this often to the population of people I work with, like God, he made us from dust. He knows we're fragile. He knows we're humans. That's why he sent his son because he knew we there was no other way because we needed him, and so um, I I think it's okay not to be okay, but also I encourage you like don't get stuck there, keep moving forward. Even like I said, there was days that I in just in these years um, that I literally had a hard time getting out of bed and that would be me like um i use the um i use it earlier the analogy of like really trudging forward like i'm just like i'm not getting stuck and so um whatever that looks like for you um and so and don't lose hope we i mean there's people everyone that was someone told me that the other day just like i'm i've lost hope in the world i've lost hope you know if we have if we don't have hope, there's nothing to move forward with. So find some hope and whatever that looks like. If it's look, if you have kids, let that be the reason why you get up that day or, um, you know, whatever that looks like, but just don't lose hope and keep moving forward because healing comes, healing comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that so true how healing comes? I mean, there was a time where we thought, our lives would never go back to normal. And I remember, you know, we would get together and we would 
go to the different memorials and we would watch the news. I would record the news for when I was away because I didn't want to miss anything, right? Um, and I just felt like, how will I ever have a day where I don't think about this? And so for those of you who are in the midst of a new tragedy or trauma, or perhaps you have not moved on from one that has been long ago, I pray that you would hear our words and that you would know there is hope, there is peace, and it's all found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you need support, if you need prayer, I, I encourage you, I implore you to just simply ask for help. In the, in the, in whatever way you know how, if it's to go knock on your neighbor's door because you don't know anybody, but you know somebody lives next door, go knock on their door. And if they don't answer, go to the next door. And just, you don't have to say anything. You, I mean, I experienced this today where I encountered um, two incredible, uh, incredible human beings who just, like out of nowhere decided that they should pray over me and my husband and it was the greatest blessing and someone's at my door I hope they don't ring the doorbell my dog is going to start barking hopefully okay dog you didn't hear it thank god okay so um for for anybody who's just suffering sorry about that i just want to um i just pray that you would just find somebody i saw a friend yesterday or maybe this morning She's, she posted on Facebook and she said, you know, I don't know if this is right or wrong or if this is weird, but I need your prayers. And she, she felt like maybe this isn't a prayer I should ask for, but you know, God uh, says that there, there are, I mean, every, he already knows, first of all, but there's nothing that you can't ask for. So, um, I just pray that if you're suffering in any way, if you need support in any way, you would reach out and you would ask for help and for support. Um, ask your local church, um, ask a neighbor. You can reach out to myself. Um, you know how to get in touch with me, or if you don't, um, here on this, wherever you're seeing it, you can comment, you can find my email, and just reach out because we would love to support you and pray for you, get you connected to resources in your area if that's what is necessary. Michelle and I both have been in um, therapy off and on since the shooting um, and continue to be. Uh, it looks different many, 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 many years later where um, just speaking for myself, it's more just than, you know, I'm just so used to having a coach that we uh, continue our conversations because it's been help healthy for me. And so I encourage you, whatever, um, whatever it is that you might be going through, if you're feeling that you're stuck and you're in the wilderness that just reach out for help. There's no shame in asking for help. And mm -hmm. like Michelle said, we are in a battle and the, the battle has already been won. So you can rest in peace and know that um, in the end, no matter what tries to steal your joy, what tries to divide you and your family or you know divide you and whatever it is, know that that is not from God, that the Lord um, has come to... Um, to, to, to comfort you and to love you and that you are a child of God. And so I want you to hear those words, let them resonate and, uh, you know, look around you at all the blessings. Like Michelle said, um, look to your children, look around you at the birds and the flowers. They were created by a magnificent maker who is everywhere all the time. He's uh, the only being that is, um, on, on the present. Did I get that right? So, um, I just thank you so much, Michelle, for your time and for your heart. Um, you mm. have made a significant difference in my life. Um, and, you know, I know that you have also made a difference in people's lives here that are watching. So I thank you on behalf of everybody who will see this and hear this. I thank you and I pray for you and your family. Um, such a beautiful light in the community and um, parts of me is certainly jealous that you get to be there. I think I've been searching for my sense of community since I left Littleton because we had such a beautiful community um, growing up and I, I hope that and, and I seek that for my family as well. So 
just thank you so much for being on. Do you have any last words um, to share before we go out? No, I just, um, it's an honor to be on here. So thank you. I just want to encourage you too, Krista, that I'm proud of you for being brave and courageous and stepping into this um, today. And like you said, it took you years to do this. And so I, I want you to know that um, you're appreciated and I am so proud of you because you, you did exactly what you encouraged people to do and you did it today. So I love you, my friend. I love you too. I thank you. And, and I, and, and that just reminds me, like I was having a really hard day. Like I just struggle with this day because I'm like, I have struggled with it since the beginning. Um, because it's like, do I feel sad? Do I feel glad? Like, I don't know how to feel. And I have a whole story that goes with that because you know, the day of the shooting, a volunteer said, it's okay, don't cry. And I took that, literally stopped crying, couldn't cry for a year, had to go to therapy. So, you know, that's the short <laughs> end of it. <laughs> that's the short end of it. But, um, you know, so don't I really- to cry. What, say that again? Don't ever, I'm like that, don't say that to people. Don't tell them not to cry. <laughs> right, right. Like, and, and, and that volunteer, like they, they did it, you know, and they didn't know what they were saying, right? Like, yeah. Nobody, those, those, those volunteers had never experienced anything like we had experienced. They had, there was no way they could be prepared for that or have any idea. I said things that day as I jumped into my peer counseling role. I said things that day that I had to go back because I told some people that day, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm sure they're going to be okay. And those people didn't turn out to be okay. And so I had to go back and ask forgiveness from those people because I carried that. I felt so, um, you know, heavy hearted that I had told people because I had experienced the other end of it, you know, being told don't cry. Um, and again, like, you know, we, we all do the best that we can in those situations. Nobody could have planned or prepared for that. So, I mean, sadly now they have protocols of how to handle these situations, but all that to say, um, this morning was a very difficult, it was difficult for me. I was like angry. I was sad. Like I couldn't pinpoint it. I was feeling overwhelmed. And my husband's like, well, duh, it's April 20th, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Like, I don't, I don't want, I've never wanted to give any energy to any of it in a negative way. And the truth is, I do, I do have a hard time with it. And so for those others who are having a hard time, what I encourage you to do is to do something that is truly scary. <laughs> Whatever the Lord has been asking you to do, just do it like today, getting live and talking about this and sharing my testimony and, you know, just talking about this because it is hard, but you know what? It's hopefully um, an encouragement to somebody else. And that is, the, the whole point, right? To, to be brave, to walk in faith, um, to do what the Lord calls us to do, to glorify his name. And, um, I, and hopefully we've accomplished that today. So I appreciate you, Kim, or pff, Michelle, <laughs> appreciate you, Michelle, um, for, um, just, you know, being here as always walking with me through the hard times and, um, I love you. I appreciate you. And, um, let's, uh, let's do this again and talk about some other incredible, I know you've got so much more to share. You're such a light in your community and at your church and you have an incredible testimony even outside of our experience as, um, Columbine survivors. So let's do it again. Let's do it again. Um, yeah, love it. down the road. So stay tuned y'all. And, Thank you so much. We'll um, just be out from here. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And I pray blessings over Michelle and her family. To the rest of you, please get in touch. If we can support you, serve you, pray for you, reach out, ask for help. Um, seek your current, your local churches and community groups. I love you. Until next time, we'll see you later.